Hi everyone, welcome to the sixth episode of Basics of Stock Market series. So today we are going to discuss about stop loss and leverage. So when it comes to stock trading, we might have heard from people that I lost whole of my money. Or I have seen people telling that I have lost whole of my money on a single trade. So all this happens if at all you don't know the concept of stop loss. So today we are going to learn two concepts that is stop loss and leverage and I'll exactly tell you what stop loss is and what leverage is and also how to actually use it on or while trading. So first of all let us learn about stop loss. So what is stop loss as the name suggests to stop loss or to limit loss okay so for example if a stock is going like let's say the stock is at 100 rupees now and we expect the stock to be appreciating its price to uh, maybe 150 rupees from 100 to 150 rupees so obviously we'll be buying the stock so if at all we are buying the stock and if at all the analysis that we have made and we thought that right from 100 to 150 the stock will appreciate the analysis was wrong let us consider the analysis was wrong so the stock all the way from 100 rupees came back to 50 rupees that is it depreciated the stock crashed to 50 rupees what happens almost 50 percentage of our investment will be washed out right so in such condition, in order to prevent this big crash or in order to prevent this big loss or unexpected loss, you can limit your loss or your stop your loss using stop loss trigger. Okay, so stop loss is a particular price below the buying price of a stock. If at all you are long order, like if at all you are buying a stock and if at all you are selling a stock, it is above the buying price. So basically stop loss is a price that is set in order to stop the loss at a particular limit for example if at all you're buying a stock at 100 rupees and the stop loss is kept at 95 rupees and if the stock if, if the analysis goes wrong and if the stock is coming to 95 it will be automatically exited or automatically squared off with a fixed 5 rupees of loss that is if at all you are keeping a stop loss you define your loss or you decide your loss so depending upon what loss you keep, you will not ever have to accept a loss other than that. So in terms, if at all you are making a trade, if at all you are making a disciplined trade with a stop loss, you know what is the maximum amount that you are going to lose in a particular trade. So you'll never lose whole money in a single trade. You never lose more than expected because you are setting the loss you need to face if at all the trade goes wrong. So I'll explain about stop loss in detail so that I can like I'll take you to the screen so that I can explain you in a much easier and comfortable way. So let us go to the screen first. So let us just consider this price band. Okay. So the current market price of stock let it be at 100 rupees. Okay. This current market price or LTP the last traded price let it be 100 rupees. So I'm just plotting 99, uh, 98 uh, and a load up to 80 rupees. Let us consider. And the same way I'm just drawing it, it, it as 110, uh, 120, 130 and maybe up to 180 or whatever it is. So let us consider the current market price is at 100 rupees and we are expecting this stock to move from 100 rupees to 130 okay so out of an analysis maybe because of any of the analysis you have made uh, your analysis or somebody told you that the stock is going to move from 100 rupees to 130 rupees so obviously what you will be doing you will be buying the stock right so you will be doing the long order regarding long orders and short orders we have been discussing on the last video so if at all you haven't seen that video you can go to the playlist channel playlist of basics of stock market series and you can watch the video it is episode number five so here you will be buying the stock considering that the stock will move upward from 100 rupees to 130 rupees. So instead of going upward because the analysis was completely wrong what happened was stock went a slightly upward and all the way it come, came down to 80 rupees or even like on a 50 rupees or something. What happened? You had to encounter a very big loss right you have to encounter a very big loss because you are not planning to have or suffer a big loss like this so here comes the game of stop losses that is if at all the current market price of stock is at 100 rupees and you consider the stock to move to 130 but 
if at all you are placing a stop loss at 98 rupees so let's consider that is basically you will have buy button you when you click on buy button you will be having to type the quantity and there itself you have a column for uh, stop losses okay that as well has been explained on 0 the 360 video you can have a see that on the playlist channel as well okay so what happens is you are placing a stop loss you can place a stop loss by just typing 98 okay if at all you need to place a stop loss at 98 you can just type out 98 and the stop loss will be kept it is as simple as that so you kept the stop loss at 98 so what happened here the stock from 100 rupees did not went to 130 rupees what happened it came a bit upward and came all the way downward to 50 rupees almost everyone lost 50 percentage of the money but what about you you as you had a stop loss at 98 your stop loss was triggered at 98 and the maximum loss you encountered was just 2 rupees here in this condition people faced a loss of 50 rupees were you faced a loss of just 2 rupees because you have kept or you have already decided the stop loss so that the stop like the loss that you make will not ever go beyond that so the maximum loss you encountered is just 2 rupees so this is a condition of long orders so what about the condition of the short orders that is the, the thought oh, that the kind of orders that you take if at all you think the stock will go downward. So if at all you have a confusion on that you can just watch the videos previously as I've told you. So I'm just drawing the price band here and let us say this is 100 rupees and let us consider this 101, 102 and going up to 150. Okay so this is maybe 90, 80 and going up to 50. So here you out of an analysis or somebody told you that the stock from 100 rupees is going to 80 rupees that is the price of 100 rupees is going to crash to 80 rupees so obviously what you will be doing you will be selling the stock that is short selling right short selling you will be short selling the stock right so basically you will be selling the stock and you will be getting profits when the stock is going down the price of stock is reducing you will be getting profits but instead of reducing if at all your analysis was wrong the stock from 100 rupees will go up to 150 rupees which will give you a 50 rupees of loss or when you're considering in percentage up to 50 percentage of loss which is a very huge loss which you are not prepared to get hit off so in this case as well okay if at all you had a stop loss at 102 okay you has a stop loss at 102 that is you just type out 102 102 at the stop loss column while taking an entry you took a stop loss at 102 and what happened even though the stock from 100 rupees went all the way to 150 rupees and those people who short sell the stock has been in 50 rupees is lows but you encounter just two rupees of lows you encountered just 2 rupees of loss. Why? Because you have kept the stop loss at 102. That is, you have limited that. Once the stock reaches 102, my analysis has gone wrong. So, I will have to exit the trade. That is a stop loss. Okay. So, basically, what is stop loss? Stop loss is a price that you set. That is, when a stock reaches the stop loss price, you have, you, you think that, the stock has to exit automatically because your analysis has gone wrong. Okay, so if at all your analysis goes wrong, you will have to understand that you, your stop loss has to be triggered and your loss has to be limited. So that is what we call stop losses. Now I'll just show you how to actually place a stop loss on an order while taking an order. That is while you're buying a stock or while you're selling a stock, how to actually place a stop loss. So I'll take you to the screen again and I'll show you how you can do that. So here this is the Zeroda Kite application. So I'm just trying to buy Reliance. So that is how the order dialog box or order pop-up box actually appears. So you're taking MIS orders. Let us consider you're taking MIS orders and cover orders specifically. Because what is cover orders? In the type of orders I've specified that cover order is an order which is covered by stop loss automatically. So you are going for cover order, market order, okay. So there is something called stop loss trigger. You can see here stop loss trigger. So what you can do is that you can just click on this stop loss trigger like that, okay. You can just 
type of the stop loss trigger and you can you can see here the current market price of reliance is at 1937 that is 1937 so you have to keep a stop loss now so you need a stop loss below the buy price because you're trying to buy a stock right so obviously in the uh, previous example i told you when the stock was at 100 rupees and you think the stock will go up that is that condition you will be buying the stock while buying the stock your stop loss will be below the price that is 98 I taught you right the same way here at 1937 your stop loss should be below 1937 so we are just keeping 1930 okay so the whole point is that you need to you need the reliance stock to be exiting or you need the stock to be selling off automatically when the price reaches 1930 or 1930 rupees so what happens you will be limiting your loss for that seven rupees per stock only Okay, so this is the condition you do when you are trying to buy a stock. So what about when you are trying to sell a stock the similar way you are trying to sell a stock. We are using MIS market cover order itself. So here there is a stop loss trigger. We need to keep the stop loss. So what would be the stop loss that we have to keep? You see the current market price is 1937. In the early example I taught you right from 100 rupees if the stock was trying to go downward you would be selling the stock initially. So uh, when which was the place you kept the stop loss you can just rewind and check as well. It was at 102 that is above the buy price right. So in case of short selling the stop loss will be above the buy price. So here the buy price is 1937 you can see in the right hand left hand corner upward so it is 1937 so your stop loss will be around uh, 1940 or 1942 or whatever it is so uh, let us just keep 191940 okay which means that if at all the stock is not going downward and it is reversing upward to 1940 your stock will be automatically exited and limiting your loss just to that three rupees so that is why stop loss is very important so basically stop loss is a factor that actually help you to limit your losses that is you will be deciding what is the loss that you're going to make if at all you go wrong with your analysis right so it can happen in market you can go wrong with your analysis you won't be always right so right so you have to make sure the losses that you make is comparatively very small with the profits that you take so to make sure that you have something called stop loss which is a price that you set in which the if at all the stock price is reaching that particular stop stop loss price you need the stock to be exiting the trade so that you won't make further losses you limit your loss yourself so that is a beautiful concept called stop loss and i hope you got the idea how to actually trade uh, using stop loss and what stop loss actually is and now we have to talk about a concept called leverage Leverage is a very important concept and I think nowadays it has been a bit familiar among people because of the new SEBI rule as well. I'll discuss about that as well. So let me just tell you what leverage is first of all. So basically in very simple terms I'll tell you leverage is kind of loan amount that brokers give you in order to make a trade. Okay with respect to the investments you make. Okay, that is if at all your investment is like 100 rupees or something, you will be getting less leverage or less amount as leverage. Uh, the same if at all you have 10,000 rupees of investment, you might be getting a bit more amount as uh, leverage. The same if at all you are investing 10 lakhs or something, you will be getting sizable amount as uh, leverage. So obviously leverage is a kind of loan amount you get from the broker with respect to your investment. Basically, uh, leverage is calculated like into uh, uh, multiplied times, like 5 times of your investment, 10 times of your investment, 20 times of your investment, etc. So basically, as I've told you, this loan amount is something that you can use to trade. That is, you can use to buy a stock, sell a stock, tackle a stock and everything. So let us consider a particular broker. Initially, Zeroda as a broker had 20 times of leverage for equity or stocks. 20 times of leverage means... With whatever investments you make, you can use 20 times of it. That is, if at all your capital is 100 rupees, you can trade with 100 into 20. That is 2000 rupees. The same way, if at all you had 10,000 rupees of investment, 10,000 into 20, that is 2 lakh rupees. You actually would be able to trade with 2 lakh rupees, even though you have an investment of 10,000 rupees. So that was a concept of leverage. 
So let me just specify there was a new rule introduced by SEBI regarding this leverage because brokers was providing leverage just like anything and uh, which, which was making a big trouble for newcomers when it comes to market. So uh, like there is a lot of misconceptions regarding uh, this particular leverage concepts among people. Basically there is a misconception that uh, SEBI has blocked, SEBI in, in the sense Security Exchange Board of India has blocked or has removed the concept of uh, leverage. No, they haven't done that. They cannot do that. So basically what happened is leverage has been cut shorted. There is something called BAR plus ELM. I'm not going into uh, such complex thing, but still let me just simplify, simplify it into a very simple thing. You will be get you, like initially you had broker, brokers that would provide you 20 times of leverage, 30 times of leverage, even 100 times of leverage you used to get. But now the leverage has been limited to around 4 to 6 times of leverage or 4 to 10 times of leverage. That is you will be able to use four to ten times of your investment depending upon the volatility of a stock okay so every, all of that would be easily visible on your zeroda terminal i'll come to that i'll show you no worries at all okay so basically i'll just give you a very quick calculation of leverage initially for that let me just take you to the screen and then i'll show the zeroda terminal as well on how to understand the leverage as well okay so initially let me just take you to the screen uh, and explain you how to calculate leverage and etc okay so basically the leverage let us consider is 10 times of leverage 10x so what is this 10x means i told you right it is with respect to the investments you make so let us consider the investment you have is thousand rupees so it is like you can use 1000 into 10 is equal to 10,000 rupees as capital to make your trades. That is you can make your trades using 10,000 rupees with a 10 times of leverage with a 1000 rupees of capital. So obviously there is a lot of questions that could arise among people that is there any extra charge that brokers uh, allot for this. No, there is no extra charge that brokers allot for this. Basically it is just the brokerage itself, nothing else. And the next question would be why brokers is doing this uh, basically brokers need higher volume of trades to be happening for higher brokerages so they are doing this particular thing and uh, even a lot of questions like if at all you're using 10,000 rupees what if the lows go beyond 1000 rupees which is your investment uh, that as well is a, a very interesting concept because without a stop loss without a stop loss you will not get leverage so what is a stop loss it helps you to limit your losses right so obviously you, you the broker will make you to limit your loss with a maximum of your investment that is you will never lose more than your investment so that like as of you will be keeping such kind of stop loss so there is no point in asking such kind of problems so obviously brokers can uh, with with power they can give you the leverage so basically there is nothing to switch on or something or the leverage will be automatically available if at all you're trading on intraday mis cover orders etc uh, it will be automatically available i'll show you how actually that's happening okay so uh, you can automatically do that you, there is nothing to be switched on or something so basically if at all you are keeping a right stop loss you will be getting a right leverage that is it so as of now you told you right around four times to six times of leverage is what you get nowadays uh, because the broker this is a SEBI has been in introducing or SEBI has been applying that particular rule by part by part and it's almost completely applied right now okay so that is about leverage and i'll tell you how to actually understand that you actually get a leverage or not okay so that for that what i'll do is that i'll take you to the zero the terminal so that you will understand it in a very better way okay so here you can see that i have took the chart of icica bank so i'm just trying to buy the stock okay so here i'm trying to buy the stock you can see here the current market price of stock is around uh, 590.75 591.10 on nse you can see here on the dialog box it's clearly here and also uh, you can see here that uh, there is regular order, cover order, etc. So, there is something called margin required here. You can see here, right? Something called margin required, right? So, what is the margin required here? That is just 65 rupees, right? So, margin required is the money that you require on your DMAT account in order to make this trade. Okay, so when you are looking at this particular trade, it is easily understood that to take a cover order with a single quantity of ICIC bank. How much does actually this single quantity cost 
it cost up to 591 rupees that is one quantity of icici bank right now is 591 rupees but you can get that for 65 rupees just 65 rupees is the margin you require in order to make a trade on this particular stock so how about the rest of the amount how about the rest of the 530 rupees or something that you get as a leverage from the broker because you're trading on intraday you're doing cover orders and your uh, stop loss is the right place you get the leverage correctly okay so like if it all the same if it all is selling the stock as well you get the leverage you can see that to sell the icic bank stock right now with one quantity as well you need just 65 rupees so that is the margin required so you need not to make your own complex calculations and all it will be very easy for example if at all you have thousand rupees and you don't know how many quantities of icic bank to be bought or sold okay so if at all you're uh, planning to uh, buy the stock and you don't know how many quantities you need to buy you just have thousand rupees so what you'll do you'll just type 30 and check for 30 it needs 1900 so you change it to uh, 20 then you'll check how much it 1300 so you need up to 17 so here 1100 you just shift one below something like uh, 15 15 quantity it takes uh, 975 quantity right so sorry rupees so basically to buy 15 quantities of icc bank you require just 975 con uh, rupees on your dmat account so depending upon the investment you can select the quantity by looking at the margin required so that is how leverage help you can trade with more than the investment you have that is with respect to investment you can trade according to the type of uh, the amount of leverage that you get right so Today's video, we were planning to discuss regarding stop loss and leverage, two important concepts that you should be knowing about very correctly when it comes to stock trading, when it's when you start to trade even as a beginner, right? So regarding stop loss and leverage as well, if at all you have a kind of confusion within you, you can ask me the doubts on the comment box. I'll be explaining or I'll be uh, helping you out with that. Also, I need you to be having your hands on this trading thing. Because you have to try it out really in order to understand or in order to experience what actually it is. So that you try to apply everything on market with small small quantities which won't affect you, which won't big, give you big big losses or uh, profits or anything. So the whole idea will be to, to start to learn. Okay. So always try to do something on market, try it out on market, whatever I teach here, you can just try it out on market, which will help you in a very great way. So this was this video was completely based on stop loss and leverage. And I hope you have a pretty good idea right now regarding what is stop loss and what is leverage. Okay, regarding any confusions, you can use the you like you can type it on the comment box, I'll be helping you out. And also regarding the basics of stock market and a lot more you, you're going to get a lot of educational content videos where you will be able to learn a lot of things on market. Okay, you will be trying to like you you'll I'll make sure you will be reaching in a place where you will be able to make your own trades so that I'll be teaching you it in a right way. So I hope you guys will be staying tuned and please don't forget to subscribe. Thank you.